In order to save some time, we'll go ahead and just start with a very basic boilerplate of this application. First off, we've got our button.js, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time. This is where we're actually going to build the button for iOS and Android, buttons that really match the platform. The other file we've got is this app.js, and that's generated for us by Create React Native App. And in here, we've just imported our button that we'll be creating, and we've just got some basic boilerplate to actually initialize this application. In this app.js file, you can see that we're already using our button component, and you can see the API that we're actually going to ex be exposing. So we've got a text prop, and that prop is going to be a string, uh, whatever you want it to be. And we've also got an onPress, and that onPress is going to be a function that should actually be called when the button is pressed. Before we actually go ahead and start creating this button.js file, I want to set up one thing, and that's the extended style sheet, which is what we're going to be using to handle the styles for our button. But something we need to do that we don't typically have to do for the style sheet is actually build it. And you'll see why we have to do that in a moment. So I'm just going to say estylesheet.build. We're not going to be using any of the global options that extended style sheet actually brings to us. But just so you know, you need to go ahead and, and build that style sheet before we actually go ahead and create our application. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on inside of this button.js file before we start writing. Uh, you can see obviously we're importing React, and then we're importing the view, the touchable highlight, which is going to be our touchable element on iOS. We're importing touchable native feedback, which is going to be our touchable element on Android. Text is going to handle how we display text, and platform is what we're going to use to actually determine which platform we're running on. And finally, we're creating a new style sheet with extended style sheet. Since I've already got the iOS simulator set up, we're going to go ahead and build the touchable component for iOS before we go ahead and build Android. So we can just go ahead and delete that line. And first thing we want to do is say if platform.os is equal to iOS, so if we're running on iOS, then we're going to go ahead and return a new component. And the root, the outside element of this is going to be a touchable highlight. Close that. And inside of this touchable highlight is where we're actually going to display the text that's passed to the button component via the text prop. So we can go ahead, open that up, and return it. Now for props for the touchable highlight, first off we want to pass in this onPress function. So now if we save this, we'll have a button, it just doesn't do anything and it doesn't have any styling. So if I click that, you can see it's highlighting black in the background, and it's a very small touchable area. So what I want to do now is actually go ahead and start styling this touchable highlight. And to do that, we can just pass a style property to the touchable highlight, and that's just going to be styles.button. And then we can go ahead and start defining that inside of this estylesheet.create. And this works just like it does on a typical style sheet. So we can go in here and we can say we're going to have padding vertical of 20. This is going to be a big button just to really uh, make it clear what's going on. We're also going to give it a padding horizontal of 35. And now we can actually go ahead and start breaking into what makes Extended Style Sheet really useful. And one of those is local variables. So just to keep things clean, I like to pull any colors out. We're going to say the button color. We'll pull that into a local variable. And that's going to be 317AF7. And now we can go ahead and use this local variable for the actual background color of our button. So if we go down here and say background color, and now we can actually use that local variable we've set up. So if I say button color, save this, and you can see we've got this button set up. We also want to set up the text color for this, so we're going to set up another element, and that's going to be text. And here we're just going to say color. And again, we're going to use a, a local variable, which we haven't set up yet. And that's just going to be text color. And we're also going to bump up the font size just a touch. So we'll set that to font size 15. So now we can actually define this text color we've set up. And here it's just going to be pure white. So with our new style property set up for text, we actually need to go ahead and define that for the text element. So we'll say styles dot text make sure I type correctly save it reload it and that's all looking good so we're just about done for the initial iOS button only thing we've got is when we press this button it's showing up black and that doesn't really go along with what we want to 
display rather than a black button let's say we want to do a lighter blue color and to do that again we're going to use one of these local variables just so we can keep all of our colors in one spot so we'll say button color underlay and this color is going to be 7BAAF9 and that's just a, a lighter version of this blue so the nice thing about these local variables is not only can we use them inside of the stylesheet.create, we can actually go ahead and use those elsewhere in our application just like we would use styles.button, we can use styles.button color underlay. So I can go ahead and go down to my touchable highlight and in this touchable highlight we can pass a prop called underlay color and then we can just say styles.button color underlay. If I save this and reload it and you can see when I actually press this button, it's clearly showing that we're pressing it by making the button much lighter. Now just to try and match the iOS design specifications, or at least what I tend to see, I'm going to go ahead and round the buttons on this iOS version a little bit. And to do that, what we're actually going to use, because the, the border radius is going to be different on iOS and Android, I want to go ahead and we're going to use another uh, nice feature of the React Native Extended Style Sheet, and that's uh, media queries, or some semblance of media queries. So we can go ahead and we'll open up a new string, and in there we can pass uh, media, and then we can pass the platform we want that for. So in this case, I want to set the border radius for iOS, and in here I'll say border radius, and that'll just be 4. So now you can see we've got this border radius set up for the iOS button. Press it. Okay, it's working. So I'm now looking at the Android version of this, and you can see that I'm getting an error, and that's because down here, when we're creating the button, we're not actually returning anything for the Android platform, just for iOS. So what we want to do now is actually return something new, and this one's going to be a touchable native feedback. So we'll just go ahead, set everything up like we did before. And one difference here, and that's just because touchable native feedback works a little bit differently than touchable highlight or touchable opacity, we're going to go ahead and set up a new view, and that view inside of the touchable native feedback is actually going to be where we put that styles dot button, so where we have that background color, the border radius, and everything. So I can save that, and then finally, we'll put the text, and the text is going to be exactly the same as inside of the touchable highlight. So if I save this, you can see we've now got a button, and if I press this button and you look closely, you can see that there's a slight ripple going on around this button. And that's what we've come to expect on an Android device. However, rather than having this you know, kind of black color, we're going to go ahead and use the same uh, underlay color that we set up before. And to do that, we can go ahead and into our touchable native feedback. Actually, first thing we should do is give that on press to it. So we'll pass on press to it. And now we can go ahead and actually set the background property. And by using touchable native feedback, dot ripple we can actually specify what that color should be that runs when the button is pressed and it kind of ripples throughout and inside of here again we'll use that styles and we'll pass it the button underlay color so if I save that we can look here and you can see we're now getting that light highlight whenever we tap on the button so two final things we're gonna do and those are both going to take place inside of our style sheet that we're creating and for our button we, this time we're going to specify just a few styles for Android. So again, we'll use media and Android. And this time, again, we'll give it a border radius. It's just going to be less than what we use on iOS. So I'll just set a border radius of one. A property that's very common on Android is to have a bit of shadow going on around this button, just to give it a bit of depth when actually looking at it. And to do that within React Native, we can set an elevation property and this property will only work on Android, so it doesn't matter if it's inside of this media Android or not. But just to keep it clear that it's Android only, I'm going to add it in here. And we can just set a number for this elevation. That'll go ahead and add a bit of shadow behind uh, our button. So you can see here, hopefully it's showing up in the video, but there's a slight, slight shadow around this button that's very reminiscent of what it should be on Android. So now we've got this button that works well and looks like an Android button on our Android. And if we look at our iOS simulator, refresh both of these. So we've got the latest. We're clicking around here. Everything's looking good. We're clicking over here. Everything's looking good. 
So we're using one component to drive both iOS and Android buttons, but those small interactions that really make the platform and the app feel like it belongs on that platform are correct given the platform that the application is running on. If you've got any React Native questions, leave a comment below or tweet me at Spencer underscore Carly on Twitter, and I'll get back to you and see what we can figure out.